Hey guys, so welcome to the wonderful world of niche. Now, I can't express strongly enough how important niche is. It is the basis for everything in marketing. And so we have given it its very own video. So without further ado, here we go on how to create your niche for your perfect marketing offer. Now, niche is a term that most people are familiar with now. It's something that's been spoken about a lot in the digital marketing world, but probably one of the most important exercises for a solid marketing foundation. Now, most people do panic at the idea of excluding people. Now, that's a mistake because a great marketing message is always designed to appeal to one particular group. And this is just the marketing message, guys, okay? It gives people certainty that this challenge, this offer is for them. It's going to get results for them, that they're different from everyone else. And we're going to talk a lot about the six human needs over the next couple of modules because it does form the foundation of everything that we do inherently as humans. So for us, it's building trust. It's building certainty. It's making you the go-to person. And that leads into number two, the reason why niche is so important. You don't want to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You do want to be the expert in female fat loss, in menopause, in you know post-injury rehabilitation. It doesn't matter, guys. The mum's fitness you know, expert. There's got to be someone who's doing something for you, okay? And that leads into the generalist versus the specialist. You guys understand this in almost every profession, generalist versus specialist. There's a price tag difference, okay, but there's also a trust expert. Like, I'm not going to go to my GP to talk about my knee reconstruction. I'm going to go to a knee specialist. My ear, throat, and eye specialist charges a lot more than my GP does to wave a little light. So understand the difference, guys. You want to be a specialist and you want to get specific results for a specific person. Now, this doesn't mean that you are not going to let someone into your gym if they're 24 because you market to 25 to 35 year olds. I want you guys to understand this is for marketing. It's to understand who you're talking to. Okay, so you're marketing to be more successful. So don't be afraid to specialize. Don't be afraid to refine your offer, okay? We need to be able to track marketing campaign performance. We need to understand what did you get a cheaper lead from, the female ad or the male ad? Was it, you know, are you getting better results from the 24 to 34? Are you getting better results from the 35 to 45? Like, you guys can see all this powerful information in your face, but it's important to use it. Sales performance will improve. You need to understand, okay, am I actually, I'm getting cheaper leads from the 25 to 35 year old girls, for instance, but I ain't making that many sales. I'm only converting one in four. But if I get fewer leads, they're slightly more expensive, but that old demographic of females, well, I can close them every day of the week. So your cost per acquisition is better. You can start making more strategic decisions rather than uh, tactical decisions. Retention. You know, you guys might want to think it's cheaper to get leads for the younger girls, for instance, but your gym, the retention of these clients, they, they, they last longer. They're in your business for longer. The average lifetime value of this client might be more expensive. Same goes for girls versus guys. Like there's lots of metrics you guys can start to track, but ultimately it comes down to the fact that you have a niche that you're targeting. You have the booty project and you have the menopausal women project. Which one's working better for you, okay? The marketing offer is very clear, all right? You need to write great copy, all right? A 25-year-old girl has a very different uh, problem than a 35-year-old girl. She's got different wants, different needs, different desires. Men have different wants, needs, and desires than women do, okay? Parents, ain't no one with kids understand what's going on in the world of a parent if you don't have them, okay? So, you guys can write copy to speak to the person that you want to believe that this marketing is for them. If you're a mum, then this is the challenge for you, okay? Imagery, again, the images that are appeal to women are different to the images that appeal to men. Images that appeal to more mature women might be different to the younger girls. You guys, we can test it, we can monitor it, we can measure it, but ultimately you guys should be looking for different images that appeal to different locations even is a funny one, okay? But also for you guys, you got to consider if you're doing online, there's different seasons. There's no point marketing a winter challenge down here in Australia if it's summer, you know, just because it's uh, it's a different season for you guys in the UK or anywhere in the world, guys. All these little things are going to impact your conversion, so it's important to know who you're talking to for every single ad for all your marketing. It needs to be specific, right? So we need to know who you're targeting on Facebook. At the end of the day, you've got to be able to plug in that audience, so you guys need to understand who is the person that I'm talking to? If it is a 25 to 35 year old female, you know, in and around a two kilometer radius from our gym in South Melbourne, that's the person. All right. And that's the audience that we're putting into Facebook. What is not a niche? It's one of my favorite things. Uh, my niche is people who are committed to fitness, who listen to their trainer and are always motivated to train. 
it's like a unicorn because one, that person doesn't exist because we all eat ice cream. Uh, no one's really committed to their fitness unless they've got a goal, okay, which is the, the fun word there, the goal, and always motivated to train. I will be very impressed if I can meet a person who is every day motivated to train because there are days where you do not want to get out of bed. All right, so it's not really a niche, guys. It's like this unicorn that everyone in the fixed world is chasing. It doesn't exist. I want you guys to start thinking about and there's lots of ways that we can work out your niche, so feel free to post in the group if you've got any questions. Ask away, guys. But what is a niche and some guidelines to follow, okay, and we'll go through some, some little hacks in order to get through this, but these are some great questions, okay? Gender is always a really great, easy one to start with, male or female. And these are generic questions, guys, that you should work through, all right? I'm sure some of you have got something that's particular, so ask away. But these are the general questions that will get everyone started. Male or female, age, typically we work to a 10-year age bracket and less specific groups. And the reason why I say this is that sometimes if you live in a smaller area, Okay, so for most of us, we're going to start to look at the Facebook audience as we start to look through marketing. But as a general rule, a 10-year age gap gives you pretty much a very good feeling that the same issues, problems, wants, desires, and needs appeal to the same audience style. They're thinking the same sort of way in terms of their development needs and, and where they are in life. So that's why we usually say a 10-year age gap. Now, obviously... Once you become a parent, for instance, it's a really easy one and a very great example, you start to identify yourself more as a parent than you do by your age because all of a sudden your life is no longer your own. Everyone who has kids is giggling and understands now. So you can sometimes, because you're now targeting your audience by parents, your audience size can get too small if you're saying, I only want to deal with parents, you know, between 25 and 35 because, you know, you might say, well, just because they're 38, they're still a parent and they still understand, okay? Because you can also do fun things in Facebook without getting too much into audience targeting now in terms of determining the age of kids and things like that to kind of refine your audience. But that's why we say unless there's a specific group. But typically, guys, when you're doing this exercise, I want you to stick to about a 10-year age bracket, okay? Now, married or single, again, it it's, comes down to what sort of objections are you going to come up against? I need to talk to my partner or, you know, I can't train at 6 a.m. because the kids are there and my husband goes to work early. Like, you know, you've got considerations in terms of the decision-making process that you guys want to consider. But also in copy, you can also pick up on some of these tidbits to create a feeling of rapport through words with your ideal client. Job type indicates training times, it indicates sedentary activity, all sorts of things, guys, that can help you create um, a little bit of rapport through copy with your clients. So you can imagine if you're targeting people with desk jobs, you know, they understand that they sit at their desk all day. They understand that they've got pains and niggles and tight necks from staring at the screen all day. You know, it's things like that that only people who sit at a desk all day understand, okay? Now, kids or no kids, we've covered that fitness experience, okay? I want you guys to think about what have they done before? What are some of the reasons they've gotten results? They haven't gotten results. Why didn't they keep results? You know, we all know that, you know, most of us have been on a fitness journey, okay? What sources of information do they rely on? You know, do they read books? Do they read blogs? Do they, you know, watch the Kim Kardashians of the world? Do they just follow Instagram for, you know, fitness and nutritional advice? What has been their journey to date and where do they get their information? And then people that inspire them, uh, personalities they trust, you know, celebrities, authorities in the marketplace, how educated is your marketplace? These are all important things to consider in the whole journey you guys are about to have as becoming experts, brand authority, content marketing, all of it. We're going to go through some elegant business model stuff uh, in another module, but you guys need to understand that this is what it takes to understand a niche. All right, some typical Q&As that we get, why not both male and female? Um, well, for the most part, uh, we touched on it earlier, guys want different things to girls. They have different issues, they have different responsibilities, they have different wants, needs, desires. You know, they've had different fitness journeys. You know, I don't know many guys who want to build a booty. I don't know many girls who want to get jacked, okay? So I just want you to think about it even as language, okay? Language can impact the niche, all right? Why specify kids or no kids? We've touched on that. Everyone who has kids knows why that's a silly question. Um, I don't have a niche. How do I decide? A great one. Um, think of at least your top three to five clients, the ones that you love working with, the ones that you love training every day, what's similar about them? And it's not their motivation, it's not their energy that they bring to class. These things are built by you. Community drives that. But ultimately, 
What is their age range? What's their family, you know, situation? What is their marital status? What sort of job do they have? Start asking these questions about the clients you already have and start looking at the similarities between them. And that will typically give you one to two niches automatically that you hadn't even realized you actually love to work with. Uh, I can train anyone. For the most part, a great trainer can get results for most gen pop people, but this is about marketing. This is about you guys being able to put out great content, great offers, you know, great imagery, get copy, great landing pages. All of this stuff for you guys is driven by niche. So I need you to understand this isn't about your capability as a trainer. It's about your marketing and the message that you're putting out to this audience. Uh, I don't want only females or only males. Again, guys, this is just one marketing offer. Okay. And you guys will start to see with the elegant business model with the marketing with the copy why it's just the marketing that's calling out to these people it doesn't mean that your gym is now only full of females that you say no to males or only no only males and say no to females but it's something to consider in terms of the culture and the community that you're building that does allow for you to start making better strategic decisions rather than tactical waiting for referrals or walk-ins and things like that this is marketing this is you driving the people that you want in your gym in your facility in your online program and I like training everyone, well, then you're a very lucky person. But again, I go back to the marketing. Okay, guys, this is about marketing. Now, questions to ask yourself as you're going on this niche journey. We've gone through the basic questions, but some other really great, powerful questions for you to answer when you're thinking about it. And this will help you write copy and, and marketing and emails and all sorts of things along your journey. What is the end result that your ideal client wants to achieve? Okay, what is it that they're there for? What are they coming for? Okay, what do they need to achieve this? And this is a service-based question. What do they need from you in order to achieve their goal? Because what I want you to understand here is, is there a gap? Is there a gap between what they want and what they actually need to achieve it and what you're offering? Okay, so it's really important that you start to draw all the, the loops together and you can start to say, well, you know, maybe I don't offer enough nutritional support for them to achieve their goal or Maybe I don't have enough session times or, you know, it's just things for you guys to start to understand if you are a fit for your ideal client and then what's held them back in the past from achieving this goal. You know, are you going to solve these problems? What is their biggest fear? You know, what, why ha are they worried about this? Why do they, should they trust you with their biggest fear? And what would be the two biggest objections uh, to buying from you? And who else plays a role in, in this decision, if anyone is? It's, you know, what role do they play in the decision-making process? Do they need to ask for someone else's advice? You know, or can they make the decision on their own? Now, I want to touch on something here with gyms versus online. Uh, it will come into play again when you guys start to look at your Facebook marketing modules. But typically for physical locations and face-to-face -face training, convenience and a physical radius from your location plays the biggest part in determining the audience for your ads. And that's basically based off convenience. There's only a period of time where people will travel large distances unless you're a super, super, super specialist in your niche, almost an authority to celebrity in what you do. Now, so for most of us, if you've got a physical gym, you're working with Gen Pop, then for you guys, convenience, we all know, plays a part in whether they work or live nearby your location, okay? So in order to form those habits, it needs to be easy for them to come. So for you guys, this niche activity is such a fantastic insight for marketing and for copy, but I don't want you to necessarily take this down and start going, okay, she's 25 to 35, she lives here in this radius, and then she likes Kim Kardashian, she, you know, washes Ashley Bynes or Emily Sky or whatever, and start adding in all these interests that refines your audience far too much. So with gyms, the niche activity is also just for you to be able to write amazing copy, for, to pick better images, to understand your client more, to refine your sales process. Okay, for online, the niche activity can be a very powerful way of reducing what is almost an infinite audience size, which isn't always the best thing. Bigger is not always better with marketing. You know, people already see on average over 7,000 marketing messages a day. So we don't want to be just some white noise in the background. You want to talk to a person, okay? And that's this is why niche is so important. We want your message to stand out across the myriad of others, not just from other fitness businesses, but other businesses in general are marketing to this audience in your physical location or, you know, in this area, in this pin that you've dropped, they're marketing to them as well. So you need to stand out and that's why the specificity, you know, the niche element is so important, okay? Now, 
For you guys, obviously, we want to stand out. That's the main thing. So I'm going to go get you guys as your activity from this video is I want you to see the following two tables. I want you to post yours in the group. So you can create your own tables based off what you're about to see. And then I want you guys to post your two tables answering the questions and you can see. I'm happy for you to change some of the row descriptions to suit your business model, but in general, these are great examples um, for you guys to get started on what is your niche, okay? So you need to post two of these in the group. Now you can see here we've done A, you I need you to note on your niche whether you're online or offline because that's going to make a big impact on the feedback that we give you. But your, uh, the name of your avatar, okay, their age bracket, their marital status, their location, kids, yeah. Ages, fitness. So no, and the ages of those kids, what's been their fitness experience, um, what is their number one fitness goal that they're coming to you for, what magazines do they read, what was the last diet that they tried, and who do they follow on Insta. All right, now you can change Insta into like uh, magazines or you can change it to blogs or, you know, I don't care. Like if it's, you know, they're still following Jane Fonda aerobics, I don't mind. But for you guys, it's important for you to understand who you're targeting and what it is that they're trying to achieve so that we can make sure that the offers that you're putting out suit your niche and we can help you guys with copy, images, and all the things that are about to follow. But for now, guys, two of these similar tables posted in the group. I want two niches filled out completely. Any questions, just ask in the group.